So I'm Ron James. I'm a filmmaker and uh, I make a lot of my own TV programming for the internet. I've got three shows, uh, Bigger Questions, Space Time, and MUFON Presents. I'm the media relations director for MUFON, so that means whenever you see anything MUFON on like an episode of Ancient Aliens or whatever, that's that I'm involved in. The recent incidents uh, regarding unidentified aerial phenomenon being shot down, uh, we're, we don't think that there's any kind of UFO alien connection to any of this stuff, but it's really interesting that it's bringing a lot of this stuff to the limelight. It's a, it's a topic that we need to explore, and anything that brings more awareness of the fact that these things exist is, is a good thing. Well, MUFON is a worldwide organization with over 6,000 members uh, dedicated to the scientific understanding of UFOs uh, for the betterment of humanity. And when we get a report, they come in either online, uh, is generally how we're contacted. First, it's, a, it's dispersed to a regional director, rather it be a statewide director or somewhere else in the world. And it's determined whether or not an investigation is warranted. A lot of times we'll get stuff that we can figure out right away, and we're not going to put resources into investigating it. But if we do decide to to actually launch an investigation into a certain occurrence, then we'll contact the person and we'll either interview them over the phone. We have a very uh, stringent set of forms that we fill out, uh, ways that we delegate different sightings, different characteristics, and, and we finalize that report. And then in some cases, uh, we might want to go actually visit the person or visit the location, especially in times when there's physical evidence. A week and a half ago, uh, Ancient Aliens did a whole show about MUFON, and we recreated one of our investigations where there was actually some uh, disturbed soil with some interesting chemical and physical um, uh, things that happened to it. So those kind of things pop up all the time. Well, you know, what's interesting about that, we, we do get rashes of reports, mostly because of activity from SpaceX. You know, when they launch their satellites, it goes all the way across the country and, and people look up and they see these things. So we get, anytime there's a, a SpaceX launch, we know we're going to get reports, but we also pretty much know what we're going to be able to do to resolve them. Um, other than that, it's fairly steady. Uh, they come in from all over the world, hundreds a month, um, anywhere from three to to 700 reports a month come in um and uh they're generally there there's a lot of similarities but there's also a lot of differences and we solve 98 percent of them 98 percent of the reports that we come in once we start cross-referencing weather patterns um uh, flight patterns military transponders things like that then we're able to pretty much determine okay this was probably caused by this or that but we do have the, the ones that are unexplained probably about three percent of the reports that come in so if we get 300 in a month we're gonna have 10 that we can't figure out nine or ten so it's um it's a very small amount and you know we take pride in that because we're not we're not walking around wanting things to be anything other than they're not we just want the truth and so our investigators and our organization are motivated by let's get to the bottom of it more than the idea that we have something to prove we don't we're not looking to establish anything except getting to the truth whatever that is Uh, we did, but it made the mainstream media pretty pretty quick. We, you know, we had people calling us asking what it was. Um, but with that particular event, they play it off like it, like all of a sudden it was just there with this idea that we didn't have any kind of means to detect it, which is ludicrous because we know for a fact, MUFON does, that inside NORAD, they're tracking unidentified objects all the time. They have protocol for doing it. So 
nothing I believe is getting into our airspace without us knowing about it. Now, whether or not all branches of military and government are informed when these things happen, that's a, that's another story. But nothing nothing goes anywhere in Earth's atmosphere without being tracked. Now, we personally believe that there is a a group that is tasked with tracking unidentified flying objects, possibly non-human objects, um, in in the atmosphere and space and in in the water water that we're never going to know who they are and they're never going to talk to us because they're you know very clandestine well i mean i think they knew what it was all along and i'm, I'm sure they knew about it well before it entered our airspace and when, when, when i think the only reason that the story went public is it would have just gone over and we would have gathered whatever intelligence we needed to gather from it. Um, the only reason that it went public is because people could see it. And so it's it's not like the government could say, oh yeah, we don't know what that is um, because you could look up in the sky and there it was. We were seeing it, people were reporting it. And um, you know, at the end of the day, you can't hide something that's in sitting there in plain sight. So, but the idea that it took somebody seeing it flying over our nuclear sites for the government to suddenly find out oh oh yeah we didn't know that was there gee thanks you know that's that's preposterous well i know that you know it's in the press that biden actually gave instructions to shoot it down pretty much right away now that didn't happen right away because of safety concerns, but I think that they 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 tracked this thing coming in, they figured out what it was, and then I'm sure that they played a little bit of let's send it some false information. Let's say, you know, we know what it's doing here, so let's mess with it a little bit. And then they shot it down so they could analyze it. Um, I'm sure all of that would have happened uh had we not known about it publicly, but since we did, you know, everybody's in on the story. And you know we have to we have to be very concerned because look, look what this is all about. We've got China floating a big giant balloon into our airspace. Any idea that something like that could come in and we wouldn't know about it? There's there's a danger of EMP attacks and everything yeah. else. So certainly, I, I just have a hard time believing that we're that unguarded and that naive. I think that that's just sort of a big play. Nothing gets into our airspace without us knowing about it. I don't think that there's more that showed up per se. I think that there's always a certain amount of these things in the airspace. What happened was they decided that they would fine tune the sensors a little bit and, and pick up stuff that they normally wouldn't pay attention to. The subsequent objects that were shot down were just like very small to the Chinese balloon. Some of them smaller than a car and um, they, they were inconsequential. One of them was supposedly now been identified as a, a weather balloon being set off by a group of a private group of enthusiasts. Not sure, but the um, but it seems to be just another civilian weather balloon. So okay. they dialed it in. They were able to pick up stuff that they normally don't pay attention to. And then just to be safe, they decided to go shoot it down just to get an idea of what they were looking at. But I think at the end of the day, um, None of them are really, there's no extraterrestrial craft being shot down. I wish there was, well, not being shot down, but I wish they were being identified. But the thing is, is we we already know that these craft are in our, our airspace. And I'm sure that there's a top-down order uh, by whoever's managing this information that you don't shoot these extraterrestrial non-human craft down you alone because they have vastly superior technology and antagonizing them probably wouldn't be wise i think it was an interesting show um probably to show the world that we can detect even small things within our airspace if we decide to and dissuade others from doing that i mean it was a crazy bold thing that china did just floating this thing in oh we're gonna go right over your nuclear silos and and, and listen for a while i mean it was it was in, it was brash it was bold it was insane and um, i'm glad they didn't get away with it Um, not a recent flap. in use yeah. no no and and actually mufon's released a report um about similar sightings of similar craft and there's been a lot especially like the octagon balloon we have photos and drawings 
of other reports of of objects like that. And the fact that it had strings hanging down from it, it was traveling at a really low speed seems to indicate that it was some sort of a weather balloon or some sort of a signal gathering device. I think that I know that the one in Alaska is supposedly identified. Um, the one over Lake Huron's gone forever, and the one that shot down in Canada, who knows? But so there's loose identification of they weren't anything nefarious. They were probably civilian weather balloons, but we're probably never going to know exactly what they were because either they can't recover them or if they do, they're not going to tell us. But it was, it, it was basically kind of, you know, after it was all over, after it ate up the media for days at a time, there's nothing to see here. Move along. We think, we think that the, uh, we're, we're, we're glad that anything that brings exposure to what's going on with UFOs and unidentified craft, that's a good thing. Um, and even when it turns out that it has earthly origins and logical explanations, it's still a good thing because, uh, it's, it's drawing attention to the subject, and these things do exist, and that's not being debated. So anything that brings attention to it is good. And it, anytime that we're able to say, okay, this is, this is weird, but we can explain it, that's even better because it gives credibility to the field. Well, sure. I mean, you know, we, uh, we absorb the information and we come to whatever conclusions we can scientifically prove. Now, MUFON's not in a situation where we can say, oh, yeah, that was aliens, because we can't prove that. We can say we think there's a good case for that, but we can't prove it. And what's really evolving in the field now is that we're starting to realize that, that an extraterrestrial element might be a part of the vast phenomena that's, that's happening, but they might not be the only explanation. There could be all kinds of life that we don't even know about. There could be a civilization that's been here, say, underwater or inside the Earth for even before us that we're seeing evidence of. Uh, there's interdimensional stuff. There's time travel. There's there's all kinds of different things that could explain some of these encounters and that, that aren't necessarily extraterrestrials like gray aliens from Zeta Reticuli. And so I think as, as things unfold and we start to get more knowledge about the nature of our reality, the answers are going to be very surprising. Even as science evolves, it opens the doors to this stuff. My my film that's coming out um, in April called Accidental Truth, we've got Dr. Michio Kaku chiming in, and he's arguably the world's most famous scientist. Uh, he's in there chiming in on actual evidence and specific technologies. So we, So we've got him talking about how some of these things may be possible and what kind of a species it would take to do it. Uh, so it's it's not so scientifically far fetched. If we start talking about interdimensional beings, there's there is a science that these dimensions exist. Now we have we haven't proven it, but there is a scientific path that that says that we may come out the other side of it with some idea that interdimensions exist and interdimensional beings must certainly exist. So it's it's what used to be really out there tinfoil hat stuff is actually starting to get a little bit of traction, especially as we start to understand the nature of consciousness. For this particular thing, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that they have, um, they, they've reverse engineered things, not to a great deal of success from what we understand, but they've been able to achieve some technological breakthroughs and they've been able to achieve some breakthroughs in material science based on things that they've recovered. But I don't think this was that. Accidental Truth that we put together, it's coming out April 18th. We go over that. There, there is evidence that we did recover crash debris from off-world craft. There is evidence that we develop certain technologies from that. And there's evidence that all of the stuff that we're seeing now um, is a way to kind of get that information out to people in such a way that they can avoid account accountability. So we point out in the film that they say that Project Blue Book ended and didn't do it. And there was nothing, uh, no studies up until 
uh, the A-tip stuff that Lou Elizondo came out with, but we pr- we tear that story to pieces in the film. We we actually found a, a a colonel that ran some of these top secret programs studying UFOs that was front facing to the public, denying these programs existed while he was actually running one of them. So uh, so we're able to kind of blow the lid off that and show this history of the the materials recovery, some of the stuff that came from that and um, the technology recovery and where that's going and how the current story, we call it the new narrative, um, is being rolled out to basically give plausible deniability to all the people that have been participating in this 100-year cover-up. Well, we've always had a slow drip disclosure. That's just been the way it is. And I think that if the people that control the information are able to, they'll continue that that faucet completely turned off, dripping accidentally. But they're up against a deadline of some kind. And, and as civilian space gets bigger and bigger, um, you know, Elon Musk is headed for Mars. There's, there's going to be things that they're just not going to be able to hide anymore. You know, that we're going to find something on the moon. We're going to find something on Mars. Uh, there's going to be something conclusive that comes out that they're just not going to be able to deny it. But so the next best thing is to go, oh, look, we're all finding out together. And so that's what's happening is this organized rollout of information that protects all the secrecy of the past. They, they're, they're never going to admit what was going on during this time. The people that were responsible for it are never going to come forward and say, yes, I've been participating in this great big lie and we have all this technology and we have all these things that we've been hiding for whatever reason. Um, But we're going to, so we're never going to get the truth, the full truth. We're going to get some kind of disclosure um, because I don't think they have a choice. They have to at some point acknowledge that we're not the only intelligent entities on, on and around planet earth or in the universe for that matter. Uh, because that's going to come up and bite us in the bud. And so, you know, it's going to be like, you got, you're either going to tell us or, you know, there, it's going to be, there's private groups doing this research now and they're finding these craft. So it's only a matter of time until we have to kind of admit it. And the film, the the accidental truth that's coming out, we, uh, we push these guys right up to the edge. reason that it's called accidental truth um in fact here I'll, I, I'd like to share this with you so the um this is the movie poster Let's see if we can get it to show and yeah so this is one this is a copy of the movie poster this one's signed by Matthew Modine he's the narrator but this is there's a lot of symbolism in this poster right here we have the 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 ufo crash of the past and and we're able to lay out a pretty good case that there's one or more of these we have the beginning of the secrecy symbolized by the man in black in the title graphics you find the words truth and denial and uh <laughs> built into the the graphic which is really what it's all about and then this this color transition between the the sky and the earth kind of is symbolic of just the explosion of consciousness that that is happening now and as you get to the top you see the human looking down and he's kind of deconstructing and what that what that is symbolizing is how once we have this knowledge we're going to have to reassemble ourselves into a whole new perception and so everything even in the movie poster is very symbolic um and so we you, you can go to our website and see more about this kind of stuff but so the film Basically, I've interviewed people for about 10 years to make this film. I have an exclusive interview with Lou Elizondo where he admits that there's a non-human intelligence accidentally. I have a a scientist that accidentally admits that he was studying classified materials for the government um, that we are able to explore why these materials can't be made on Earth. We have an ex-undersecretary of defense who basically admits that there was a secret group studying crash debris. We have um, we have uh, the people that ran ATIP talking about it, and we have a, re- a, a retired army colonel that the uh, military says never existed, but we know he did, um, 
basically admitting that he ran a program 30 years ago and they were studying the same kind of craft. So that's just a couple of the highlights from the film. It's not just another UFO documentary. It's really moving the ball. After, after sure. Accidental <laughs> Truth, there's going to be no room for these guys to go. They're, they're, they're already right up against the wall with a little bit of air between finally having to admit that there's a non-human intelligence engaging the human race, but they haven't admitted it yet. But there's no, but there's, there's no air left in that after that. The UFO reality can no longer be denied. In 2017, the New York Times broke a front page story about a shadowy government program. Pentagon had this secret UFO monitoring agency, which nobody knew about. Don't ask me, because I'm not going to tell you. Instead of answers, we've been given a new narrative. The UAPs are not ours or any foreign governments. Then the question is, whose are they? You can ask the questions, but who are you going to ask them of? And you've got to make sure you're asking the right people. There are many things that are out there in the ether aren't officially brought to our attention. So how would it have to be officially brought to your attention? I'm good. bringing it to your attention. Sure. <laughs> Do you expect to see real answers in this report? Uh, honestly, I don't think so, Jake. A memorable quote in that is, technology not of this earth, not made by man. That's a profound moment. So have you studied classified materials, but you just don't have them? I just shouldn't say anything more. Individuals at the Pentagon confirmed the Roswell spacecraft is real. It's just a complete cover-up. Some phenomena point to an interaction with consciousness. Maybe the physical evolved from consciousness. Life may exist in all sorts of forms. The question is, what's our definition of life? 